The game was probably developed fast and furiously because it left slightly mad studios with no room for ideas. My name is Paulo and this is our video review for Fast and Furious Crossroads. Tradition says that movie-based games tend to be bad, not to get into a pointless controversy, but as much as you may claim to love the Sega game based on the Power Rangers movie, the only thing keeping it alive in your memory is nostalgia. I would even dare to say that the only movie-based game that's worth the trouble is the pinball machine of Last Action Hero. But I'm getting sidetracked here. We're gathered here today to talk about Fast and Furious Crossroads, the new game based on the outlandishly successful Universal franchise, which runs out of gas before even getting to the start line. Fast and Furious Crossroads is a transmedia experiment of the Fast and Furious saga, which acts both as a spin-off and a segue to what will become the ninth film in the series, and which will be making constant reference to events in the plot. The game invites us to embody a group of drivers who will face the most Hollywood-esque threat ever seen the first truck hijacking mafia in history, which is now extending its criminal arms throughout the world, just like the Templars in Assassin's Creed, only on wheels. This might sound ludicrous at first, but once we remember that The Rock was able to change the course of a torpedo with his bare hands in one of the most recent films, we quickly adjust to the idea. In an attempt to keep all forms in place, everything in the cinematography of the game has a direct parallel in the film editing, and the assorted cast of characters perfectly fits the mold, even with the voice acting falling quite short of the mark. This could be considered a minor detail, if it wasn't only one of the many shortcomings of Fast and Furious Crossroads. At this point, you might be wondering why I am starting this review with the similarities between the game and the film. Well, because it's probably the only thing worth our while in this experience. Fast and Furious Crossroads was developed by Slightly Mad, a studio whose track record is only based on race games. As if this wasn't enough, in 2019 they became a subsidiary of Codemasters, a company with a wide assortment of games in its history, mostly races, and with the acclaimed Formula One saga as the cherry on top. This is why it's hard to understand why one of the main problems of the game is the driving. Leaving aside the fact that the cars are seriously unattractive, a shame considering that the only camera we have is rear view of the cars, none of them are nice to drive. SUVs feel more agile than race cars. Muscle cars are as heavy as a freight train and never really provide us with a sensation of speed. Driving a curve properly is a matter of luck and handbrake literally stands for start spinning like a top. Similar to a platform-based game with unskillful characters, all actions suggested by Fast and Furious become a nightmare when our rockets become uncontrollable. And when we manage to control them, driving them just isn't that much fun. The design of the missions in Fast and Furious Crossroads is old-fashioned and completely random. As if the studio couldn't agree on whether to develop an arcade action or race game, or an urban driving simulator. Whereas the trailer promised an adrenaline rush when jumping off a cliff, giant car persecutions and battles against bosses. The truth is that it actually feels more as if we were running errands in Grand Theft Auto only without ever leaving the car. In more open map settings, we'll find a fair amount of situations with which we can interact, including obstacles, ramps, and objects to collide against. Contradictorily, at times, our goal is to drive as correctly as we can. And so, apart from street races, it is all about alternating between chasing and being chased after. This is where Fast and Furious becomes more entertaining. Instead of having to race against our adversaries, we get to fight them like in a beat-em-up, but with cars. Having the ability to hit from the side or the back as long as our vehicle has that feature, we can get rid of cars and sequences that resemble the action of the films. Using the cross brace whenever the game allows, we can jump from one character to the other to fully seize the abilities of each car or driver, and if we lower our expectations, we can even have some fun. 
Unfortunately, our suspension of disbelief is not hydraulic. And when we see that every single enemy car looks the same, or that the stages in these sections are sterile, and the bosses completely lack imagination when they're not being simply unfair, enjoyment runs out of steam very quickly. Making a list of the game's flaws could turn this review into outright cruelty. Cars don't have a damage model, characters look like bootleg versions of their human counterparts, and the game's scarce 30 missions last less than cinematics interconnected connecting them. To be honest, it looks plain ugly. And what's worse, the frustration of repeating segments goes directly against replayability. And the multiplayer mode where we can embody heroes, villains, or police officers never fully gets us on board due to the instability of the matchmaking. Fast and Furious Crossroads is hard to recommend, even to diehard fans. It fails to justify why anyone should spend $60 on a game that looks so last generation. And this comparison isn't even fair, since the 7th generation of consoles featured race games like Split Second or Blur, which may not have been the crown's jewels but did contribute some new ideas that Toretto and company could have largely benefited from. I tried to avoid speaking ill of developers' work, but ultimately, no effort is perceivable behind this game. Maybe the curse of film-based games will be broken one day, but this game won't be doing that neither fast nor furiously. This is why Fast and Furious gets a score of 3. The intentions in terms of production value and a few action moments suggest that this could have been a halfway decent game, but all the other elements are an affront to entertainment, to the player and to the franchise. If you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to turn on notifications. Follow us on social media and visit www.malditosnerds.com to stay up to date with the latest video game news. Thanks for joining us and see you next time.